Are you getting the errors in your next app right now? Seriously, if I said, yo, I just had an error. I was checking out and something went wrong. Can you check it? Do you have the ability to go find that? If the answer is yes, I'm pumped for you. Leave a comment as to how you're doing that. But if the answer is no, this is a very important video for you to watch because a lot of people don't keep track of the errors that happen in their next deployments and other backend solutions as well. It's easy for us in TypeScript land to get used to just console logging everything and having it there when we have problems. But once we ship to users, we lose that control. And it's very important to make sure your errors are going somewhere where you can find them and address them meaningfully for your users. So how do I recommend doing that? Well, as we've mentioned before, Next isn't just a front-end framework. It's actually explicitly not. Next is a back-end framework. Right now, if you're deploying your Next app in Vercel, logs are happening, but they're not retained. If you happen to be in the dashboard when an error occurs, it's sitting there when you're there and you have the ability to see it. However, if an error happened 10 minutes ago, it won't be there unless you're explicitly using a thing called a log drain, which takes those logs as they happen and drops them into a collection of logs somewhere that you can query against and look into. The one that we're going to be talking about today, they asked a sponsor and I said no, because I love these guys. They're the homies. We're here to talk about Axiom. Axiom is a relatively new option in the space that I am particularly hyped on. They are specifically for backend logs right now. That's the main thing that they are delivering on. And it is one of the most convenient ways to do it. They're trusted by us, as you see here, as well as like Prisma uses them super heavily. Vercel themselves are playing with them a bunch. Plex has been one of their biggest customers from what I know. The magic of Axiom is how you integrate it into a Vercel app. I'm going to hide the screen so I don't accidentally leak things I shouldn't. We're going to go to, let's go to the poll app. How about that? We'll start there. Cool. Here's Zapdos. This is the polling app that Brent and I were working on a few days ago. Let's add a log dump. Axiom. Add integration. Sure. Making a whole new account on Axiom, by the way, because I want to use my work account for this. And they even have, oh, next Axiom is really cool. This package actually took a bunch of guidance from me and it's in a really good state. You could send web vitals from Vercel to Axiom for your actual like user experience. So you wrap your app with this. It rewrites requests so that they can't be blocked by like ad blockers and shit and sends a bunch of like web vital data. So like how CPU usage, how fast our page is loading, that type of stuff. This is very new and I personally have not played with it just yet but I love that it's open source. I love the way that they built it. They've been taking tons of advice from me directly as well as others in the community. And uh, where is the, with Axiom? Yeah, this guy. The clever thing it does here, it proxy paths uh, web vitals and logs so that you can reroute all of the traffic through your own endpoint. So to go back into Axiom directly, uh, did I... Oh, that was a new tab. Cool. I think I actually need to go sign in on Axiom with my GitHub. Again, cool. And we have here Vercel. Nothing's happened just yet, but if I go to z.t3.gg and I wait for this to load, I'll just go. I guess I can archive a question or two here. Now, might take a bit for that data to hit. Or do I have to turn it on? I might have to turn it on. Zapdos, settings, integrations, configure. Oh, no. Seems like it's already configured. Which means, theoretically, I should be getting data. Yep. Data's coming through now. If I run the query, oh, this is just for that query builder. But I... Should, yep, here are all of our events. And now anything we're console logging, anything else we're doing on the server, we now get all the data for it. That's all it took. Main account, click link. And now all of the requests that we get come in here. I can filter by error. I can filter by pretty much anything I can think of. So we can look at all of the requests that uh, 
contain Theo. So as if you went to my Q&A URL, which nobody has just yet, but if I go to z.t3.gg slash Theo, I think I have to do it slash ask slash Theo. Yeah, cool. So now I'm on the page and doing things. Let's submit a question quick, theoretically. Yeah, request that path contains Theo. Here's some requests that contain Theo. Super cool. It is one of the easiest ways to log absurd amounts of data, query through it, and figure out what went wrong if a user had an error. The pricing is insane, if I recall. Uh, we have a sweetheart deal, so I don't know what it actually is. Uh, uh, free, half a terabyte a month <laughs> with 30 days of retention. And five terabytes with 90 days for a hundred a month. And unlimited team members at this tier too. They don't lock on. Like, this is what I like about Axiom in particular. There's not a lot of providers that are like this, where it's, they're chill about the way that the things they're pricing on. They're, the thing that they are charging you for is the absurd amounts of data they expect some customers to push. And there are people who are doing more than five terabytes of logs a month on their service right now. They're they're able to power some crazy shit. Their infra is nuts. The people working on it are like writing like one of the funniest conversations I had with uh, Saif from Axiom is him and another engineer there were actively trying to like pick up on C++ again, not so they could write it for performance, but because they were going through a bunch of like research papers and theses from like math students that like wrote these like 40 plus page theories on how to theoretically have like the most performant data structures and search methodologies. And they were learning C++ because all of those students that wrote those papers wrote them in this awful C++ like sub dialect and use no packages. None of them believe in packages. So they became C++ experts just to translate the source code from those chaotic research papers into something usable for their own services. It is really cool what they've pushed themselves through to make this possible. Maple asked, what happens if you hit the limit? I have no idea. I'm assuming you get a bunch of warnings ahead of time and they probably lock it because it's how much data you can push up. Like if you actually break 0.5 terabytes of data pushed up, you're probably already talking to the founders. <laughs> They're super cool. They jump in shit all the time. I have DMs from Saif right now, which I should probably let him know. Just DM him, letting him know that he's being shilled at the moment. Love these guys a ton. I they, they offered me a very generous amount of money for this sponsorship. And I, as I said, declined because we're getting way more value than what that sponsorship would have been out of me getting to use them at ping and they've given us great deals and helped us out a ton there too and they're so goddamn responsive like for me to say hey if you do a next thing it might be worth looking at this package and then a few days later they dm me a link to their new with axiom next js package that does all of the things i recommended and more like this is one of those teams i trust more than anything and because of that they're easy to recommend the fact that the product is great and solves a common problem is a nice bonus. So Axiom is my solution for server side and Axiom's web vitals are my up and coming solution for keeping track of what the performance is like for the users on the site. For client experience though, which is very important, like they click a button and something disappears or breaks. This isn't gonna screen record and give you all the details you might need for those types of things. Historically, LogRocket has been the go-to for that type of thing. LogRocket, you might know for their awesome blog or their podcasts. What you might not know is what they actually do. LogRocket's thing is session replay. They don't really have any good examples on the homepage, hilariously enough, because they're too busy buzzwording things up. But the, the goal is a user session. You can like click on a user was on your website for 15 minutes. They went here, here, and here. You can click that session and it will play it back for you. You can speed it up, slow it down. It's not actually recording the session. It doesn't take the pictures or video. Like for us, we're doing a video chat app. I can't see the video from the session, but what it does is track the like events that a user does. 
LogRocket's pricing is a little aggressive. They're the industry standard, though, so definitely worth considering. Recently, I've been playing with uh, Highlight.run, which is a newer, more minimal alternative. Very, very similar, though. They're a tiny bit more focused on how to connect the back end and the front end so you can have a more full stack error story. Personally, I think the pairing of Axiom for back end and Highlight.io for front end is a really powerful combo. So that's what we're moving towards right now at Ping. I am very excited about the options here, in particular, the React components and like next stuff for Highlight is also in a very good state. So these are both the solutions I personally use for tracking my errors in Next.js. I think it is very important that you pick something and you know where the errors go whenever an error occurs. I also think you should be less scared of console logging in general. You shouldn't console log every time a component renders. That's chaos and really bad. But when an action occurs, like when I'm posting to my server and I am changing, how do I put it? Like when I'm posing to my server and I am changing permission states for a user, I might log changing permission states, user object current permission, user state changing now, and then after it changes, user state changed successfully to the new user state. And it's annoying to have all of those logs Maybe, I don't think it's that big a deal, but the benefit is you now have way more info when you go to figure out what the hell went wrong. Hope that this helps you figure out what your logging story looks like for your Next.js apps. It's important to know where those errors go and to make sure you can get them when you need them. A lot of errors are gonna be hard to reproduce and having a system like Axiom, like LogRocket, like Sentry, like Highlight, these types of solutions will make it way easier for you to know what went wrong and fix those problems when you have them. Hope this one was helpful. Thank you so much. Peace.